What's up guys, my name is Brandon and in this video we're going to be comparing the iPhone 12 Pro to the iPhone 13 Pro after a full week of usage. So for the past year I've been using the 12 Pro as my primary device and I decided to stick with the same form factor this year and go with the iPhone 13 Pro and the results were a lot different than I initially expected. The differences are a lot more obvious than I thought they would be. So we're gonna be comparing everything in this video and hopefully by the end, it's going to help you decide if you should upgrade from the iPhone 12 Pro to the iPhone 13 Pro or if you're upgrading from an older device like an 11 or older, I want to help you decide whether or not you should upgrade to the 13 Pro or save a couple hundred bucks and just go with the 12 Pro. This video is also sponsored by Canva, but more on that later. So let's go ahead and get into this comparison. All right, so first things first, the price. So the iPhone 12 Pro is no longer sold new by Apple, but you can pick one up refurbished or used on eBay. And looking at eBay, which is where you'll probably get the best deal anyways, the 12 Pro is currently going for around seven to eight hundred dollars for the 128 gigabyte models, and even some of the 256 gigabyte models are going for just under eight hundred dollars. Meanwhile, the iPhone 13 Pro starts at $999 for the 128 gigabyte, that is the base model, and it goes all the way up to $1499 for the one terabyte model. So if you decide to go with a used or refurbished 12 Pro, it's going to save you around 200 to 250 bucks. So let's keep that number in mind throughout this video. Now, as for the colors, the iPhone 12 Pro comes in Pacific Blue, Gold, Graphite, and Silver, whereas the 13 Pro comes in Sierra Blue, gold graphite and silver and as for the overall design they both feel similar in the hand and that's because they both have that same flat edge design along with the incredibly premium feeling borders on the edges which are made of stainless steel they are still fingerprint magnets here on the 13 pro just like they were on the 12 pro so that is the one downside of the stainless steel borders but they are both very solid and they both have the same IP68 dust and water resistance. Now the 13 Pro is going to be thicker and heavier than the iPhone 12 Pro and that's due to a bigger physical battery inside. So the iPhone 12 Pro weighs 6.66 ounces or 189 grams, whereas the 13 Pro weighs 7.19 ounces or 204 grams. And this is a difference that you can feel in the hand, but it's not really a huge difference. It's definitely not a deal breaker it's only about five percent heavier so really not a major difference but just something to note and looking around the body of these phones you will notice a slight shift in the button placement on both sides of the 13 pro so the volume buttons and the mute switch are moved down a little bit on the body along with the side or the power button on the right hand side now another thing you'll notice very quickly when holding these two side by side and especially when setting them down on a surface is that the camera bump on the 13 Pro is massive. It is noticeably bigger than the camera bump on the 12 Pro. And the best part about it is that it's not all for show, really the only good thing about it because it is massive. So the good thing about that is that it's not all for show. The camera on the 13 Pro is a lot better than I ever thought it would be, even compared to the 12 Pro, which is crazy. And we'll talk about that here in a moment. But first, I wanna talk about these displays. Now, when we flip these phones around to the front, this is where you're gonna notice one of the biggest changes in the 12 Pro to the 13 Pro, and that is with the display. So the 12 Pro and the 13 Pro had the exact same 6.1 inch Super Retina XDR display, but the big difference here is that first of all, you can see we have a smaller notch on the iPhone 13 Pro. It's 20% smaller, although it is a little bit longer. And you can see the speaker grill has been moved up to the top right there. So that is one thing that you'll notice right away. But the other thing you'll notice instantly after actually using the software is that we have a ProMotion 120 hertz display on the iPhone 13 Pro, whereas the iPhone 12 Pro has the same 60 hertz display that we've known forever with the iPhone. And this is by far one of the most anticipated features for an iPhone. It's something we've been waiting on for many years, but Apple just had to perfect it. And honestly, I think they did. So the 120 hertz refresh rate is actually variable, which means that your screen is not always refreshing 120 times per second. It only does it when you are pushing the phone and just moving quickly or playing an intensive game or something like that. If you're just sitting on the home screen like I am right now, or just slowly scrolling through like pages of a book, the display can refresh as low as 10 hertz, so 10 times 
per second, which in turn is going to save a lot of battery life over time. So the fact that it's a variable 120 hertz ProMotion display makes a big difference. And that's another reason that it's not going to, you know, have a bad impact on your battery life. You also get the option to cap the refresh rate on the iPhone 13 Pro to 60 hertz here inside of accessibility, or you could just simply enable low power mode and it automatically caps your display to 60 frames per second or 60 hertz. And going into this phone, before I got my hands on it, I thought that this would be a difference that only like I and other tech nerds would notice but that's just simply not the case. I mean, I've handed the phone to friends and family and all of them can tell a difference right away, which again, surprised me. Everything just feels smooth like butter. The animations from unlocking the phone, opening and closing up applications, and even just typical browsing around the phone feels so much more smooth than it does on the 12 Pro. I honestly felt like my 12 Pro was lagging when I went back to it after using the 13 Pro for a few days, which is crazy. But aside from that 120 Hertz refresh rate, everything else like the resolution, the contrast ratio, and all of the display features are the same, except for the brightness. And that's because the 13 Pro also gets brighter than the 12 Pro. So the 13 Pro has a max brightness of 1000 nits compared to 800 on the 12 Pro, but they both still max out at 1200 nits when watching HDR content. But let's not, you know, ignore that 200 nit jump from 800 to 1000 because that is something noticeable on the 13 Pro, especially when you're outside in direct sunlight. I'm in Florida and I need all of the brightness I can get. So that's something I noticed right away with the 13 Pro. And also I noticed that the thermals seem to be improved on the 13 Pro because the screen doesn't dim as much or for as long when under distress from heat which was easily one of my biggest complaints of the iPhone 12 series, including the iPhone 12 Pro. So those are some major advantages the 13 Pro has over last year's model. So before we move on to the camera differences, I wanted to talk about Canva, which is the world's leading design platform that I've personally been using for many years. As a matter of fact, some of my old thumbnails on this channel were created using Canva back in like 2014, 2015. And now I'm using them to create professional looking Instagram stories, resumes, presentations, and more. I even made some infographics using Canva last year as well. And Canva makes designing pretty much anything you can imagine easy for everyone. If you've ever had to pay someone to create a business card, a flyer, a social media graphic, a resume, or really anything else, you must not have had access to Canva at that time. Because if you did, you would have been able to knock it out with one of their thousands of professional templates and save tons of money while having fun doing it. And that's why paying for the pro version is not a huge deal either. You're saving yourself money. And Canva Pro will unlock its true potential by giving you access to Teams, which is where you can invite five other team members and design things together in real time. You also get access to their social media planner, premium animations, and a lot more professional templates, graphics, and fonts. They also have stuff for video as well. So if you create YouTube videos, you can get things like intros and just a lot of other cool templates for video work. So if you wanna get started with Canva, it's completely free, but the way to go is definitely the Pro version. And if you wanna get 45 days of Canva Pro for free, go ahead and click that link down in the description below to get started. All right, I can't go any longer without talking about the cameras on the 12 Pro and the 13 Pro because aside from that 120 hertz, refresh rate and that display on the 13 Pro, this is going to be one of the biggest differences year over year. And just looking at these two side by side, you could tell there's gonna be a massive difference. I mean, look at the lenses. Every single one of them are bigger here on the 13 Pro. So on the iPhone 12 Pro, the telephoto lens has an f2.0 aperture, whereas on the 13 Pro, it has an f2.8 aperture. On the 12 Pro, the wide angle lens has an f1.6 aperture, whereas it has an f1.5 on the 13 Pro. And then the ultra wide lens on the 12 Pro has an f2.4, whereas on the 13 Pro, the ultra wide lens has an f1.8 aperture, which is a huge jump. So one thing you'll notice right off the bat is that the aperture got lower for all lenses except for the telephoto lens, which means that more light is able to come in, which results in better pictures and video. And as a matter of fact, the main camera sensor gathers 84% more light than the iPhone 12 Pro this year. That's a huge difference. But the telephoto lens, again, went from an f2.0 aperture to an f2.8 aperture on the iPhone 13 Pro. And the simple explanation for that is because the lens 
is now a 77 millimeter equivalent and gives the iPhone 13 Pro a 3X optical zoom compared to 2.5X on the 12 Pro. And you can see that here inside of the camera application, we zoom in to two, whereas on here on the 13 Pro, we zoom in to 3X. And you can see obviously a big difference there in the zoom capabilities with that telephoto lens. And another big advantage for the telephoto lens on the 13 Pro is that it also has night mode. So on the iPhone 12 Pro, only the ultra wide and the wide angle lenses were able to shoot night mode shots. But now you can do that with the telephoto lens on the iPhone 13 Pro. And as for that ultra wide lens, which got the biggest upgrade this year, it also has autofocus, which allows us to take macro shots on the iPhone 13 Pro. And this is easily one of the biggest reasons I can see someone upgrading from the 12 Pro to the 13 Pro. It is so much fun to shoot macro shots on the iPhone 13 Pro. I was not prepared for this. I heard about it, but I didn't think it was gonna be that big of a deal until I started using it. So just take a look at some of these macro shots you can take with the iPhone 13 Pro. I mean, I find myself now going around the house, anywhere I go, just trying to see an object like really close up with a macro shot. It's just a ton of fun and the results are incredible. Now the iPhone 13 Pro also gets an exclusive feature called photographic styles, which if you swipe up right here and tap on this icon, it will open up this right here. We could switch between different filters and you have the ability to adjust the tone and then also you can adjust the warmth right here to get a look that you desire. And these are basically going to be filters but they apply before you take the photo and you can't like take them off after you take the photo. So it's really cool. It changes the whole look of the camera to really get it to how you like. Like if you want something more vibrant, if you want something with more saturation, you could do that permanently without having to apply a filter after you take the photo. So this is really cool. I really like the option, the flexibility and the customization that Apple put in here with the 13 Pro with these photographic styles. It really just makes taking photos so much more fun. And as for video, the iPhone 13 Pro also thrives in video. And that's because we have two exclusive features on the 13 Pro related to video and cinematic mode is one of them. This feature uses the A15 Bionic chip in AI to intelligently choose the focal point of your shot. So it's going to automatically change the focus when subjects do, and it even anticipates when a subject is about to enter the frame and adjusts the focus accordingly. Like it adjusts and focuses on their face, which is crazy. It's basically magic. And it's cool because after you shoot a cinematic shot, you could actually change the focal length right here. If you tap this, just like you can for a portrait photo, you could change it for the video right here, which is just awesome. And again, even if you think you won't use it, you should try it out because I didn't think I would actually enjoy it as much as I do. And I can see a lot of people that even are not into video, just really loving the cinematic mode. And then another exclusive feature that is not here yet is ProRes video, which is going to allow us to shoot video in that practically lossless format, which is great for video editors and just those who shoot semi-professionally on the iPhone, if that exists. So shooting ProRes in 4K is limited to the 256 gigabyte models and above since that video size is going to be absolutely massive when you shoot ProRes. But again, that's not out yet. It will be coming out later this year and I cannot wait to try that out. And then also the iPhone 13 Pro gets sensor shift stabilization this year, which was an exclusive feature to the 12 Pro Max last year. The 12 Pro does not have that. So video stability is going to be greatly improved this year on the 13 Pro as well compared to last year's 12 Pro. And if we go back to the video section right here, you'll notice that we have a 3X optical zoom in with a 2x optical zoom out and also digital zoom up to 9x. I mean, look at that. You can see some specks of dirt on my desk that I can't even see with the naked eye. So anyways, we can compare that to the 2x zoom on the 12 Pro Max. You can see there from two to three and then the digital zoom only goes up to 6x. So some nice improvements there to the zoom and that's also thanks to that new telephoto lens. And then as far as the front facing cameras go, these are going to be the same as they were last year aside from the photographic styles which you can see the difference in the color right there because i have a photographic style applied over here on the 13 pro max take a look at the difference right there before i even take the photo so that's one difference you could see that those photographic styles make so that is something added to the front facing camera and then we also have 
ProRes video and cinematic mode for the front facing camera as well. So overall, the camera improvements this year are a lot bigger than even I realized at first. And using the phone for this first week, you can actually tell the difference with pretty much every lens that you shoot in. No matter which lens you shoot in or how much you zoom in, the pictures actually look better and the videos look better on the 13 Pro. It's not just about the specs and the numbers, real world usage, it actually looks better. Everything turns out in a higher quality on the iPhone 13 Pro, whether that's because of the lighting, because of the photographic styles, whether that's because of more light being brought in, whether that's because of cinematic mode. I mean, there's just a lot of reasons that the camera is a much bigger upgrade than I think a lot of people are willing to admit going from year over year from the 12 pro to the 13 pro now inside of the iphone 13 pro and one of the big reasons the camera system produces such great results is the a15 bionic chip now this of course is the successor to the a14 bionic found in the iphone 12 pro and honestly the difference between the two is very minor with day-to-day -day usage like me i just use a lot of social media apps you know i take pictures i do typical things however Thanks to that 120 hertz display, everything feels much smoother and faster on the 13 Pro. But overall raw performance, like opening up apps and things like that, is going to be very similar. There's not gonna be a big difference in speed, but when it comes to more intensive things like gaming, the iPhone 13 Pro has a five core GPU. For the first time ever in an iPhone, we have a five core GPU compared to the four core GPU in the 12 Pro. So graphics performance will be improved this year. So if you're a big gamer, that is one thing to keep in mind. It's gonna be a lot better on this 13 Pro. And speaking of that A15 Bionic chip, that's also part of the reason why the battery life on the iPhone 13 Pro is going to last an hour and a half longer than it did on the iPhone 12 Pro. And my results so far are incredible with this 13 Pro. I mean, you can see here, I posted this on Twitter, I am getting amazing results with the battery life on the 13 Pro. It is an absolute beast. It's pretty much like the 12 Pro Max was last year, but this time it's on the more compact 13 Pro. And this battery life allows me to go through an entire day without needing to charge. Whereas before on the 12 Pro, I would have to charge at least once per day. So definitely a nice improvement in battery life as there should be because we have a thicker device because of a bigger physical battery inside. So it's justified because we have amazing performance with the battery here. And then I did also want to touch on the speaker quality because this is an area that I almost instantly noticed a difference in. It's very subtle. It's very small. But for some reason, I noticed a difference right away with the speaker quality in the iPhone 13 Pro compared to the 12 Pro. So the external speakers are louder. And also the more important thing is that the sound separation is more noticeable when listening to music. The music just sounds better. It's not just loud, it's actually more, there's more clarity in the music. So that's one thing to note if you do listen to music out loud on the external speakers, you will see a minor upgrade this year going from the 12 Pro to the 13 Pro if you decide to do that. So all in all, the differences between the 12 Pro and the 13 Pro seemed a lot less obvious on paper than actually using them in real life. So now let's discuss which one you should choose. So if you have an iPhone 11 or older and you're considering getting an iPhone 12 Pro instead of the iPhone 13 Pro, I would say that you should just spend the extra $200, $250 and go for the iPhone 13 Pro. It's more than worth it for that camera, especially the camera, the battery life and the display upgrades are going to be a huge upgrade over your current phone and even over the iPhone 12 Pro, they're a big upgrade. So they'll especially be a big upgrade over the 11 or older. Now, if you have an iPhone 12 Pro and you're considering upgrading to the iPhone 13 Pro, but you're on the fence, I have to say that it actually is worth the upgrade. Now, I know, I know, I said you shouldn't upgrade if you have the iPhone 12 or 12 Pro, but I said that before actually using the phones extensively. And now I can safely say that I personally would upgrade from the 12 Pro to the 13 Pro for you know the greatly improved camera, the greatly improved battery life, the 120 hertz display. I mean, those three alone are massive upgrades, even year over year. They're a lot bigger than I anticipated. And like I said, it's only going to be an additional 200 to $250 to go from the 12 Pro to the 13 Pro. Now, I would not trade it in to Apple because that's a ripoff in my opinion. Sell it on eBay or something where you can get the full value out of it and then use that money towards 
getting your iPhone 13 Pro because I think it's justified to spend an extra 200 to 250 bucks. So let me know what you guys think about the iPhone 12 Pro and the iPhone 13 Pro. Which one do you have or which one are you going to upgrade to sometime soon? Let me know down in those comments below. And if this video helped you out, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. Also make sure to subscribe for a lot more iPhone 13 comparisons coming very, very soon. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and thanks to Canva again for sponsoring and I'll see you soon.